it made you like, I mean, something about that you read in the book that gave you a lot of food for thought, you know, mm. that, you know something mm. that you'd like to share with us. One but I was very moved by Kirsten's story about the vigil and interested to find that these vigils have happened before mm. and nothing was done about it. It's just in this instance, they decided to do something about it. So the inconsistency didn't surprise me, but mm. uh, I was still enlightened by that. You know, the article, I found the article very moving. Uh, it made me want to do something. Um, there's also, I was very encouraged by the young people, although they were shut down, who were complaining about the schools, you know, uh, when it came to the transgender issue. And these, these kids were so brave and they were so conscious and they were so active about what they did. I was very proud of them, you know, and I don't think they, they were frightened at all by the shutting down and closing down of their protest. Mm. I think a lot of their friends, a lot of other young people got involved in the whole discussion. I was very, very pleased to see that. Mm. Um, Sulia and I do some streaming, so we meet a lot of young people who have become very aware of this. Young Singaporeans very aware of the situation in Singapore, much more than my generation, who mm. were pretty politically apathetic. Mm. You know, and it very, really encouraged me that it, it, the book pointed out what these uh, students were saying about how they wanted their education system to change, to become more open, to be more discussive. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's really a good book. It's, it was grim in parts, I think, you know, but it, grim in a way that moves you to want to do something. Mm. Mm. It's enlightening. It's, 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 it's a pleasure to be enlightened, about, even though it's grim, I think. So, so I, I love the book. I read it a couple of mm. times. Uh, I got very emotional, so I had to read it again with a calmer mind. <laughs> that's, that's really nice. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks uh, mm. Ampi, and something yeah. you want to share about the book? Yeah, so, so I think... Uh, reading the books, I think some people have an impression that resistance is an act of rebellion, is an act of anger. Um, but reading the book, I, I realize often that you know, resistance is, is an act of love. And there are ways in which it can be enacted with humor, with joy. Um, so one of the essays that I love is, is by, by Kokila Anamalai. Um, there's another one also by Silan Pali, and, and I highly recommend it because, you know, for this work that he did, 32 years, Integration of a Mirror, uh, where as, as part of that public intervention, he stood in front of the parliament building, right? So there wasn't really an artist statement, so I think this book is one of those rare instances when he actually talks about this work. Yeah. Um, so he recounts an incident. He's uh, one of the policemen who approached him, uh, asked him, oh, you don't know Chia Tai Po? Why are you doing this for him? Right. And then uh, there was a passerby and there was a little girl or something, and she had tripped, and the policeman went over and tried to help her. And Silan actually said to the policeman, oh, you, you don't know that girl either. Why would you do this for her? Right? And, and I thought that, that, that said everything about what it means to care for another person who's not in your immediate circle, right? So, so that idea of, of thinking about a, a larger humanity, that kind of fellow feeling, that kind of comradeship we would feel for another human being, um, to commemorate the person's imprisonment for 32 years, to feel that suffering, to want to walk in his shoes. Um, so I think this, this book, uh, <laughs> I threw the pitch, right? Yeah, but please read it because I think it will hopefully like revise some stereotypes you might have about what is, what is resistance, what is activism, what is protest and to know that it is, can be a very human and life-affirming uh, and, and joyous thing, actually, to stand for what you believe in. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Dr. Chi, some last um, words? About yeah, yeah, in a similar vein, uh, I mean, that there are, I just want to, to highly recommend this book. Uh, there are a lot of gems, you know, uh, uh, stories that I think uh, people should, uh, uh, can relate to and should, you know, be knowledgeable about. Uh, but rather than just, just uh, um, cite you know, certain chapters, I just, overall I think it's important that um, y you know, this, these two years of, of the COVID pandemic has brought to, to light the, the, the importance of people being able to come together, mm -hmm. right? When we remain isolated, when we remain insulated, it, it, it affects society's psychological mental health. And that is, is, is what humanity is all about, isn't it? At the very essence of it, that's what activism is all about. People coming together 
being able to talk about some of the things that we care about. And we, what we care about cannot just be Will Smith slapping the, uh, yeah. the, the other Chris guy, Rock. Chris Rock. <laughs> right? It, it's, it has to be about things that we care about that affects us daily. And guess what? Things that we care about and things that affect us daily all comes under the uh, broad rubric of politics, isn't it? Policies. So that when you begin to deny people the ability to come together to talk about politics and policies, that's where I think society begins to go downhill and cannot be the kind of robust, healthy society that we all want to see Singapore become. Okay. Kirsten, last words, something that you want to talk about. I, I think uh, even though part two of the book makes for very grim reading, I, I really appreciate that sort of laying it out because I think when I started in civil society, it was very commonly said that Singaporeans are just like that. We don't protest, we don't like politics, we don't push back. It's just not Singaporean in the Singaporean DNA to do this. And I think when you see the timeline laid out, it's, it's a very strong pushback against that narrative, right? It's not that we were born like this, not to resist. We were made like this and we were, it was taken away from us. And I feel like every time we assert that it was taken away from us is also a way to assert that we need mm -hmm. to take it back and, and, and not just accept right, that, oh, we were born like this, then we'll just be helpless forever because this is just how we are as a people. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I really appreciate like, that the title is ridiculous, right? Because if yes. it was a book published by, by like, the SPH one, it will be called Lawbreakers. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know the, the mm -hmm. fact that we can assert that this is ridiculous, <laughs> you can't do this to us. You can't do this to people. Um, it's, it's an act of defiance that I really think is very powerful, right? Rather than say, this is a book of stories of people who broke the law and then we are very sorry, then we reflect, then we won't do it again. But, but to say, no, it, it is just ridiculous. You can't do this to Singaporeans. I think that's very powerful already. Well, thank you very much. Um, well